these things you've just seen are substitutes. They're either inexpensive or homemade versions of the real thing. And with that idea in mind, I want to talk about creating a poor man's temporal table in SQL Server. This video is for T-SQL Tuesday number 106. T-SQL Tuesday is a monthly writing prompt where members of the SQL community can all write or blog about the same thing. This month's prompt is hosted by none other than Steve Jones, hence the shirt homage. And the topic is about triggers. I don't use triggers very often, but this example of a poor man's temporal table is the exception. But before we dive into a technical solution, you might be asking yourself, Bert, why do we want to create a home-built version of a feature that's baked directly in a SQL Server? Well, I've become spoiled using temporal tables ever since they were introduced in SQL Server 2016. If you're not too familiar with temporal tables or system version tables as they're also called, uh, I have made a few videos about them in the past that I've linked to below, but the general idea is that temporal tables will help you keep track of what data looked like in a table. Um, they consist of two tables, a base table and a history table, and anytime your base table is modified, the previous version of what that row looked like before it was modified is stored off into the history table. But the problem is, they're only available starting in SQL Server 2016. Fortunately, sometimes I need to work in older versions of SQL Server, and I've really gotten used to that temporal table functionality, so I really miss having it. So while I would never use this for when I'm on SQL Server 2016 or newer, uh, this works really well when I'm stuck on one of those old versions. All right, let's take a look at how we can fake temporal table functionality using triggers. First, I set up my base table that is going to store all the current data. The key things to note are I'm using the ID column as my primary key, and I'm including two datetime2 columns that will keep track of when a row of data was added or updated in this table. I also have a history table that mirrors the structure of my base table. Next, we have to define the trigger. This is where the mechanics of faking the temporal table functionality happen. We create a trigger that will execute after any updates or deletes. When a row is updated, we want to make sure to automatically update the sys start time column to the current UTC date time in our base table, and then insert the way the data used to look like into the history table. In the history table, we update the sys end time to the same date time value that we just inserted into the sys start time column of our base table. All of this is important to make it easy to query these tables later on to see what data looked like at a certain point in time. And that's it for the setup. If we look at how this replicates the functionality of a temporal table, you'll see that it, it works really well. If I start with a bunch of rows already inserted into my base table, and then I update the row where ID is equal to one, we see that the row successfully updates and our original value of that row was copied over to our history table. The same functionality works if we delete the row ID with ID equal to one. It disappears from our base table, but the last value of it's copied over to our history table. Querying our data for a certain point in the past is also pretty easy. It's not quite as easy as the new uh, querying syntax in SQL Server 2016 for temporal tables, but all we have to do is union all our two tables together and then just in our where clause filter on those sys start time sys end time columns to be able to recreate what our data looked like at a certain point in time. And that's pretty much it. I've linked to a blog post below which contains all the example queries if you want to recreate it for yourself, as well as some notes about performance comparisons with actual temporal tables in 2016. It's not a big deal, so don't worry about that. It's just kind of more additional info if you want it. And I hope if you're stuck using an older version of SQL Server that this tip will help you. So thanks for tuning in this week. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to click or tap that subscribe button to be notified of all my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.